。这场演讲总长超过100分钟，不过你现在看到的是我浓缩出来的超级精华版本。我已经把那些你不需要懂的、听了想睡觉的技术细节，像是 Blackwell、MV Link、Omniverse、量子电脑，通通删掉了。只保留黄仁勋对 AI 未来最真实的思考，这也是我们这样的普通人最容易也最应该了解的。这场演讲也是他首次公开 NVIDIA 接下来五年的蓝图，从 AI 工厂、Token 经济到代理 AI、Agentic AI、GPU 的未来角色，黄仁勋全都讲得清清楚楚。你不需要是工程师，本集影片会让你真正搞懂。AI 将会怎样改变世界？而如果你想看得更深入一点，但依然不想被太技术的内容搞混，我也帮你整理了他在今年初 CES 演讲的重点版本，讲了更多实际应用与产品发展。这两部影片搭配一起看，你会完全掌握黄仁勋怎么看 AI 的现在与未来，以及 NVIDIA 到底在做什么。It's great to be here. My parents are also in the audience. 我爸妈妈来，他们在哪里 ？They're up there. <clears throat> Nvidia has been coming to Taiwan for over 30 years. This is the home of many of our treasured partners and dear friends. Over the years, you have seen Nvidia grow up, and seen us accomplish many exciting things, and have been partner with me all along the way. Today, we're going to talk about where we are in the industry, where we're going to go, announce some new products, exciting new products, and surprising products that open new markets for us. Creates new markets, new growth. We're going to talk about great partners and how we're going to develop this ecosystem together. As you know, we are at the epicenter of the computer ecosystem, one of the most important industries of the world. And so, it stands to reason. When new markets has to be created, we have to create it starting here, at the center of the computer ecosystem. And I have some surprises for you. No company in history, surely no technology company in history, has ever revealed a roadmap for five years at a time. No one. Would tell you what is coming next. They keep it as a secret, extremely confidential. However, we realized that Nvidia is not a technology company only anymore. In fact, we are an essential infrastructure company. And how can you plan your infrastructure, your land, your shell, your power, your electricity, all of the necessary? Financing around all over the world. How would you possibly do that if you didn't understand what I was going to make? And so we described our company's roadmap in fair detail, enough detail that everybody in the world can go off and start building data centers. We realize now we are in an infrastructure company that's essential all around the world. Every region. Every industry, every company will build these infrastructures. And what are these infrastructure? These infrastructure, in fact, not unlike the first industrial revolution, when people realized GE, Westinghouse, Siemens realized that there was a new type of technology called electricity, and new infrastructure has to be built all around the world, and these infrastructure became essential. Part of social infrastructure. That infrastructure is now called electricity. Years later, this is during all of our generation. We realized there was a new type of infrastructure, and this new infrastructure was very conceptual, very hard to understand. And this infrastructure called information. 
This information infrastructure, the first time it was described, made no sense to anybody. But we now realized it is the internet. And every internet is everywhere. And everything is connected to it. Well, there's a new infrastructure now. This new infrastructure is built on top of the first two. And this new infrastructure is an infrastructure of intelligence. I know that right now, when we say there's an intelligence infrastructure, it makes no sense. But I promise you, in 10 years' time, you will look back and you will realize that AI has now integrated into everything. And in fact, we need AI everywhere. And every region, every industry, every country, every company, all needs AI. AI has now part of infrastructure. And this infrastructure, just like the internet, just like electricity, needs factories. And these factories are essentially what we build today. They're not data centers of the past. A $1 trillion industry providing information and storage, supporting all of our ERP systems and our employees. It's, that's a data center, a data center of the past. This is Similar in the sense that it came from the same industry. It came from all of us. But it's going to emerge as something completely different. Completely separated from the world's data center. And these AI data centers, if you will, are improperly described. They are, in fact, AI factories. You apply energy to it, and it produces something incredibly valuable. And these things are called tokens. to the point where companies are starting to talk about how many tokens they produced last quarter and how many tokens they produced last month. Very soon, we'll be talking about how many tokens we produce every hour, just as every single factory does. And so the world has fundamentally changed. We went from a company, on the day that we started our company, I was trying to figure out how big our opportunity was in 1993, and I came to the conclusion, NVIDIA's business opportunity was enormous, $300 million. We're going to be rich. $300 million chip industry to a data center opportunity that represents about a trillion dollars to now an AI factory, an AI infrastructure industry that will be measured in trillions of dollars. And this is the exciting future that we're undertaking. This is uh, real-time computer graphics I'm standing in front of. This is not a video. This is computer graphics. It's generated by GeForce. This is a brand new GeForce 5060, RTX 5060. And this, this is from ASUS. My good friend Johnny is in the front row. And this, this is from MSI. And we took this incredible GPU and we shrunk it in here. Does that make any sense? See, this is incredible. And so this is, this is uh, MSI's new uh, laptop with 5060 in it. GeForce brought CUDA to the world. Right now what you're seeing is every single pixel is ray traced. How is that possible that we're able to simulate photon and deliver this kind of frame rate at this resolution? Well, the reason for that is artificial intelligence. We are only rendering, we're only rendering one out of 10 pixels. So every pixel that you see, only one out of 10 is actually computed. The other nine, AI guessed. Does that make any sense? And it's perfect. It's completely perfect. It guessed it perfectly. Of course, the technology is called DLSS. Neural rendering. It took us many, many years to develop. We started developing it the moment we started working on AI. So it's been a 10-year journey. And the advance in computer graphics has been completely revolutionized by AI. GeForce brought AI to the world. Now AI came back and revolutionized GeForce. So really, really amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, GeForce.
12 years ago, we started with perception, AI models that can understand patterns, recognize speech, recognize images. That was the beginning. The last five years, we've been talking about generative AI, the ability for AI to not just understand, but to generate. And so it could generate from text to text. We use that all the time in ChatGPT. Text to images, text to video, video to text, images to text, almost anything to anything, which is the really amazing thing about AI that we've discovered a universal function approximator. A universal translator. It can translate from anything to anything else if we can simply tokenize it, represent the, uh, the bits of information. Well, now we have reached a level of AI that's really important. Generative AI gave us one-shot AI. You give a text and it gives you text back. That was the two years ago when we first engaged ChatGPT. That was the big, amazing breakthrough. You give a text and it gives you text back. It predicts the next word, predicts the next paragraph. However, intelligence is much more than just what you've learned from a lot of data that you've studied. Intelligence includes the ability to reason, to be able to solve problems that you've not seen before, to break it down step by step, to maybe apply some rules and theorems to solve a problem you've never seen, to be able to simulate multiple, seek, multiple options and weigh its benefits. Some of the technology you might have heard about, chain of thought, breaking down step by step, tree of thought, coming up, a whole bunch of, coming up a whole bunch of paths. All of these technologies are leading, it, leading it, uh, the ability for AI to be able to reason. Now, the amazing thing is, once you have the ability to reason, and you have the ability to perceive, that is, let's say, multimodal read PDFs, you could do search, you can use tools, you have now agentic AI. This agentic AI just does something that I've just described all of us do. We take, we're given a goal, we break it down step by step, we reason about what to do, what's the best way to do it, we consider its consequences, and then we start executing the plan. The plan might include doing some research, might include doing some work, uh, using some tools, it might include reaching out to another AI agent to collaborate with it. Agentic AI is basically understand, think, and act. Well, understand, think, and act is the robotics loop. Agentic AI is basically a robot in a digital form. These are going to be really important in the coming years. We're seeing enormous progress in this area. The next wave beyond that is physical AI. AI that understands the world. They understand things like inertia, friction, cause and effect. That if I, if I roll a ball and it goes under a car, Depending on the speed of the ball, it probably went to the other side of the car, but the ball did not disappear. Object permanence. You might be able to reason that if there's a table in front of you and you have to go, you have to, go to the other side, the best way to do it is not to go right through it. The best way is maybe go around it or underneath it. To be able to reason about these physical things is really essential to the next era of AI. We call that physical AI. And so in this particular case, you're seeing, you're seeing us simply prompt the AI and it generates videos to train a self-driving car in different scenarios. And I'll show you more of that later. That's a dog. It said, generate me a dog, generate me one with a bird, with people. And it started out with the image on the left. This new computer we call DGX Spark is in full production. DGX Spark will be ready, will be available shortly, probably in a few weeks. We have tremendous partners working with us, Dell, HPI, Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, Lenovo, incredible partners with, working with us. And this is the DGX Spark, this is actually a production unit. This is our version. This is our version. However, our partners are building a whole bunch of different versions. This is designed for AI native developers. If you're a developer, you're a student, you're a researcher, 
And you don't want to keep opening up the cloud and getting it prepared and then when you're done scrubbing it, okay? But you would just like to have your own, basically your own AI cloud sitting right next to you and it's always on, always waiting for you. It allows you to do your prototyping, early development. And this is what's amazing. This is um, DGX Spark. It's one petaflops and 128 gigabytes. In 2016, when I delivered DGX1, this is just the bezel, I can't lift the whole computer, it's 300 pounds. This is DGX1, this is one petaflops and 128 gigabytes. Of course, this is 128 gigabytes of HBM memory. And this is 128 gigabytes of LPDDR5X. The performance is in fact quite similar. But what's most important is that the work that you could do, you could work on this, is the same work you could do here. It's an incredible achievement over just the course of about 10 years. Okay, so this is DGX Spark for anybody who would like to have their own AI supercomputer. And it's, um, uh, I'll let all of our partners price it for themselves, but one thing for sure, everybody can have one for Christmas. Okay, I've got another computer I want to show you. If that's, not, if that's not enough, and you would still like to have your own personal, thank you, Janine. This is Janine Paul, ladies and gentlemen. If that one isn't big enough for you, here's one. This is another desk side. This is also going to be available from Dell and HPI, Asus, Gigabyte, MSI, Lenovo. Uh, it'll be available from Box, from Lambda, amazing workstation companies. And this is going to be your own personal DGX supercomputer. This computer is the most performance you can possibly get out of a wall socket. You could put this in your kitchen, but just barely. If you put this in your kitchen and then somebody runs the microwave, I think... That's the limit. And so this is the limit. This is the limit of what you can get out of a wall outlet. And this is a DGX station. The programming model of this and the giant systems that I showed you are the same. That's the amazing thing. One architecture, one architecture. And this has the ability, enough capacity and performance to run a one trillion parameter AI model. Remember, Llama is Llama 70B. A one trillion parameter model is gonna run wonderfully on this machine. Okay, so that's the DGX station. Well, I wanna thank all of you. I wanna thank all of you for your partnership over the years. We are at a once in a lifetime opportunity. It is not, it is not an understatement to say that the opportunity ahead of us is extraordinary. For the very first time in all of our time together, not only are we creating the next generation of IT. We've done that several times. From PC to internet, to cloud, to mobile cloud, we've done that several times. But this time, not only are we creating the next generation of IT, we are in fact creating a whole new industry. This whole new industry is gonna expose us to giant opportunities ahead. I look forward to partnering with all of you on building AI factories, agents for enterprises, robots, all of you amazing partners building the ecosystem with us around one architecture. And so I want to thank all of you for coming today. Have a great Computex, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for coming.